Dr. Carlson, you found that some patients who could have even the best potential outcomes aren't always following through with surgery. That's right. We identified 110 patients retrospectively who underwent pre-surgical evaluations for treatment-resistant epilepsy. And among that group of 110 patients, only 45 proceeded on to have epilepsy surgery. Ultimately, among those patients, over 80%, nearly 90%, were seizure-free. However, the majority of patients, 65, did not proceed in going forward with surgery. As a result, we wanted to better understand what was happening to those patients. Well, what was happening to them? So, we identified that over one-third of those patients ultimately never followed up at our epilepsy center. It's certainly possible, and in fact probably likely, that they've chosen to follow up at other epilepsy centers who may or may not have offered epilepsy surgery as a treatment option. In addition, 22% of patients became seizure-free following their pre-surgical evaluation and as a result declined going forward with epilepsy surgery. A smaller percent, 3%, felt that they were doing well enough with their current medical regimen that despite seizures they chose not to proceed with epilepsy surgery. The remaining patients chose not to proceed with epilepsy surgery with no identified reason precluding epilepsy surgery. And this is a group that we're particularly interested in further understanding in the future so that we may better serve their needs and identify even before the pre-surgical evaluation whether or not they're interested in going through with epilepsy surgery. Is there something that general neurologists who are caring for these patients on a daily basis can do to help patients understand that this could be a real benefit for them? I think it's critical that epileptologists, general neurologists, and primary care physicians are aware of the potential impact that epilepsy surgery can have, particularly in patients with temporal lobe epilepsy and other surgically remediable epilepsies. Early communication of this may help in identifying patients who are interested in surgery and help us in understanding why patients don't want to go through surgery so that we can better address those issues and needs in our pop patient population. And do you think it might be beneficial for neurologists just to keep looping back on this information, uh, keep touching base with their patients and saying, what do you think? Or have you changed your mind about this? I think that's absolutely critical. We can't think of patient care, whether it's epilepsy or any disease, as a static entity. And the decision that a patient makes at one point in time may not be at all the same as what they feel two years, three years, or even one year from that time. So it's important for epileptologists and neurologists, as well as primary care physicians, to revisit epilepsy surgery in the treatment-resistant population so that we may offer that when appropriate. This is Michelle Sullivan reporting from Baltimore for Global Medical News Network.